Hey guys, Kuden here, and welcome to episode 4 of my DAISY how-to series. Um, this episode I'm going to be showing you how to navigate and find a way from point to point on the Shinaras map. <coughs> um, I am actually staying home sick today, so I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little scratchy or I just don't sound very enthused, I'm not feeling the hottest. So, but. I figured, you know, I'm staying home, not doing anything, so I should do at least something productive. <laughs> so, I'm going to be recording this episode. Maybe episode 5, I'm not really sure. I'll get at least episode 4 done today. Um, in this server, I actually am the only one on right now. And this is actually the server with the dead bodies. I came back to um, see if I can get any more Stanag SD magazines, because I have emptied these seven are all about halfway empty, so I got a couple refilled ones, so I have like four full magazines now. And I also set up a tent a little ways over there, so um, if I do die, at least I still get my... I don't have my DMR in there, but I have a spare um, M4 CCOSD. So at least if I die, I don't lose that. But. <coughs> Hopefully I won't die. Um, okay, so for this episode I'm going to be showing navigation. And to start off, the first thing you need to do, obviously, is find north. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a compass, then you can pr just press K, and it will give you your compass. And all you have to do is line the north arrow up with the top of the compass, the little line on top of it, and that way is north. That's pretty simple. Um, if you do have a map, you just press M. Um, some servers will show your per player, um, and they will show you which way you are facing, although it might take a couple seconds to update. But that's another way of finding north if the server shows your um, character's location. Sometimes they don't. It depends on the server difficulty. <clears throat> um, if you don't have either of these, but you do happen to have a watch, which you can press O to bring it up, you can still actually find north. Now, obviously, you have to have a sun to do this, and the sun is not showing right now, but I think there's enough shadow to do this. Um, actually, I don't think... Oh, wait. It's getting a little bit brighter now. Maybe it's just my imagination. Okay, this has just enough shadow where I can do this. So obviously you're going to need a shadow, which means you'll need the sun, and you'll need a watch. Um, watches are usually one of the easier things to find, so if you are not, unable to find a map or a compass, you can use this watch to find north. Um, you press O to bring it up, unless you've changed that key, and if you double tap O, it will stay, so you don't have to hold down the mouse or the button anymore. Alright, so first thing you need to do to find north the watch is to make sure um, your shadow detail is on very high. If it's not, this will not work as good because you need a very detailed shadow. Um, so what you need to do is stand up and look as straight down as you can so the watch face is as vertical to the, or not vertical, as parallel to the ground as it can be. Um, then you need to stand in the shadow like so and align the hour hand, which actually is the only hand on there because they're right next to each other right now on the server. And you need to get that to be parallel with the edge of the shadow. Um, I will probably pause the video right here and so I can draw some lines on the screen um, because it's really difficult to explain. But you want to align the shadow so it's as par or align the hour hand so it's as parallel to the shadow edge as you can. Then after that, you need to draw an imaginary line going from the um, center of the watch out along the hour hand, and another one out um, going straight through the um, the twelve on the the twelve o'clock position. So you have two imaginary lines, and these are about at a 90 degree angle, a little bit more, maybe a 95 to 100 degree angle. Now in the middle of those two lines, right in the middle of it, you need to draw another line, 
and this line is south. As you see, this is hard to explain, so I'm going to hopefully get some, um, I'm going to edit in some lines and just take a still of the video right here. But that is south, which means if that is south, then the line directly opposite of it is north, which would, the north line would be going about in between the um, four, maybe a little bit off, but in the four general location, which if I press up, okay, is just about right, as you see. So that's how you can find the north with just your watch. Um, it's a little complicated, and I'll see if I can do a better job of explaining that and be able to draw it out for you um, when I edit the, this video. I'll do my best. <laughs> um, so now that you've found north, you if you do not have a map, you can go online, <laughs> and the map that I would suggest is DayZDB.com. Um, it's, it's a great map. It shows all the spawn locations for <coughs> everything in every city as well as car spawn locations, gas stations, all that stuff. So that one is really, really helpful. And that's actually what I have now on my laptop sitting right beside me. <coughs> so now what you want to do, if you have a water bottle that is empty, then I will show you actually how to fill that up. And you need to find a freshwater spring. This will not work in the ocean. Because obviously you can't drink ocean water. Um, should be a lake along this road, shouldn't there? If I'm not mistaken. Yes, there is a lake along this road. Oh, it's right here. I was looking at it the whole time. Okay, so you need to find a lake or... I don't think there's any streams, actually. I take that back. You need to find a lake or a pond such as the Topoca Dam or this little lake right here. Um, and you can fill up your water bottle there. there. Now as you see, um, I have put a little circle on the map. And this is a private waypoint. Only you can see this. If I'm to exit my map, then it'll also give me a little indicator showing the exact point of where the waypoint is and the distance to it. So right now I am 489 meters away from this waypoint right here. Um, if you want to make a public waypoint, um, you double click, then you type in whatever, and everybody who has a map can see this. It might take a little bit to update for everyone, but after 10-15 minutes everybody can see this. Um, my advice, do not listen to these, because a lot of times people will sit up on a hill and they'll put down here, um, five cars and 10 AS50s. They'll just bullshit you, and they'll sit up on the hill, and when somebody goes down to check it out, boom, you're dead. Like, this guy has said help. <laughs> that probably is a trap. So just don't listen to public waypoints. And I personally just delete them. You just hover over them and press the delete key on your keyboard, and it'll delete them. And there will just be random ones all over the map. And just ignore those because they're either a trap or just some random thing that somebody has had to put down for the fun of it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy to follow waypoints, obviously. You just walk towards them. You might have to walk a little ways to side to side to side, depending on if there's a big hill in your way, because hills are usually easier to go kind of around on the edge of them than just go over the top of them because you have to stop walking. If you just run along the side like I am, then you'll just go around a hill faster than if you went straight up it like that, because it slows you down to a walk. <coughs> um, what else do I need to show in this episode? Oh, oh, oh. Sliding. <laughs> um, yeah, you will slide down hills like that if they're that much, that are angled that much. So you can't actually break your leg. That's why I was kind of nervous there. But I've got morphine, so it's okay. Um, there's not much else to navigation. Um, the main thing is just finding north, and after that, 
if you don't have a map and you're looking at one on um, like Daisy DB, if you're looking at a map that aren't, that, sorry, if it isn't in game, then you'll need to find waypoints or land markers such as this road right here. And then if I was to go on to there, I would say, okay, well, here's a lake and a road is right beside it. And I'm on a lake right by a lake and there's a road right beside me so that's probably where I am and you just need to look for on landmarks that would show up on the map that will help you um, find your location if you start getting lost um, to fill up your water bottle just go into the water a little bit and then just fill water and there you go it's filled you can drink it and I'll go back to empty you can fill it again so that is an unlimited amount of water source as long as you can um, be by a lake to refill it. Um, I actually can show how to get food and how to cook it. Because I'm going to, this episode is actually going to be a part survival too. It's not just navigation, it's also surviving and finding food and water. Um, I'm not actually going to waste a DMR shot because they're loud and I'd rather not waste a uh, bullet for a DMR on a pig. Um, but if you notice, there's that pig up there. I don't lose him. And there will be an animals that spawn in the map that you can kill. Um, there will be cows, goats, pigs, rabbits. Rabbits are pretty hard to kill and they're not really worth it because they only give you one meat. But... Cows are usually the best. If you can find a cow, kill that over a pig or anything because they'll give you eight meat steaks. They'll give you a lot of food. Um, if you are running low on health or blood and there, you don't have any friends with you, the best thing to do is just start killing animals and eating their, um, their meat as fast as you can, even if your food is all the way full. And because cooked meat will give you... Um, They'll give you 800 blood back, and canned food will give you, um, I think, three to 500, depending on what it is. Um, but in order to get the uh, meat off of them, you're going to need uh, a hunting knife. Um, you'll need a hatchet to cut the tree down, and you'll need a box of matches to light the fire to cook it. Um, to get the animal, you just um, hover over it and use your scroll wheel and click cut animal. And once he's done with his little animation, the boar has been gutted. There are four meat sticks now in the carcass. So if you go to its gear, there's four raw meat. Um, the body will stay here either until you hide body, which means any gear on it will disappear. <coughs> Or if you take all this meat off, then the body will disappear. Um, what I'm going to do actually is throw my magazines, hopefully without losing them, <coughs> onto this um, pile. And you, if you notice, you can't walk up to a tree and cut it down. What you actually have to do is be standing in a forest, such as where I am, and harvest wood. It doesn't really matter where you stand, you just need to be standing somewhere. So, you can't right click on this wood pile, but if you have a matches, then you can right click and make fireplace. Oh, I think I dropped my wood. <laughs> yes, I did. I picked that back up. And wood piles take up two inventory slots. So, hey, you will need at least two spots open in order to collect wood, otherwise, it won't let you. And then you just make the fireplace. Go back over here. Um, I'm actually going to throw some of these into my bag. Because I want to get all my mags and everything off this body, but in case I lose them because of the glitch. <coughs> um, and then you just scroll down and light fire. And there you go, you have a fire. I mean, we'll make smoke which can be seen from a little ways away. So you want to be careful when you make a fire that you're not gonna make yourself really visible and get shot. But if you have meat or um, raw meat in your inventory, you can hover over the fire and cook meat. 
And actually, I clicked the wrong one because it disappeared. He'll do his little animation. And you have cooked three raw meats. So now they are cooked, and you can eat them to restore your blood and to fill up your hunger. Let's grab this last one. So now all the loot's gone, this body will disappear. Maybe. Yep. So don't be putting anything that you don't want to lose on there for too long because I think I've had a couple times where it glitched out and thought there wasn't anything on there and it disappeared with my stuff. So that's why I was kind of concerned about putting my mags and, and things onto there, but I'm actually going to eat a little bit more of this food. Um, the fireplace does actually have an inf some inventory slots. They're not very many, <clears throat> but they are um, useful to be able to throw some magazines and such onto and then pick up. I should pick up and do more mag. I want my meat to go down. <laughs> Alright, so now I've got some food, some drinks, and I am able to sustain myself for a long time. Now when you leave, you always want to put out the fire. It will burn itself out, but it's best to put it out so people can't trace you as easy and follow your trail. Um, so that's basically it on survival. I would show what to do in a, in a player encounter, but I am the only one on the server. Um, and there's really not a whole lot you can do other than, um, it's really your, um, decision whether or not to kill the player. Um, sorry. <coughs> um, if you're, if he's threatening you, such as in episode two where I needed to go down to Electro and there was the players there, if they are in a... Um, location where you want to go or if they're in a location which is threatening you or if they're close range then you probably want to kill them because you don't want to risk them seeing you and them killing you first because they feel threatened but if they're not a threat to you then I think it's best to let them go I mean there are quite a few players who'll just kill you on sight no matter what because they want your gear and it gives them a murder. But I prefer to only kill when I have to because the, the other players did spend quite a bit of time getting their gear, so it's only fair that you respect that and um, not kill them unless needed to. That's just my opinion. You can decide what you want to do with a player when you find them. Um, my advice is keep your distance and um, don't just go running up to somebody and help them out unless you know them or if you know for sure that they are injured. Because there will be some players, especially servers with side chat, where the whole everybody on the map can communicate. Because if you're in um, direct communication, then only people within like a general area of you can hear you or see your chat. Um, but if servers have side chat where everybody can talk to each other, um, some people will say that they need to help with like they have a broken leg or they need a blood transfusion. And some of them are legit, but other times it's just a trap. So unless you know for sure that they need help, um, I wouldn't go help them. Because a lot of times people will say that, oh yeah, I'm down, um, I'm laying by the fire station at, at Electro, and then they'll go up on the hill and wait for you to walk over there, and then they'll shoot you. And they'll run down there, take your stuff, and do it again. Um, so just be really cautious, and don't trust anybody unless they're your friend who you know, and know they're not going to stab you in the back. Now, don't get in a car with anybody unless... Like you've just spawned and there's no nothing to lose, um, or if you know them, stuff like that. Just don't trust anybody. Is my 
advice on what to do with other players. Um, I want to. I don't. I'm not saying that running alone by yourself is the best idea because um, it is risky to go by yourself. It's better if you're in a small group. But if you don't have any friends, like on Teamspeak or something, to play with, then don't run around saying, "Hey, man, you want you want to tag along with me? We, we can go find some places." Because a lot of times they'll shoot you in the back when you when you get something like a, a good gun and they don't have quite as good a gun they'll be like oh i don't want that boom shoot you take it and that's that um yeah but that's my little um word of advice on players um i don't know if i'd risk hunting down players to show what to do in different situations anyways you kind of saw that in episode two where i shot the one guy who i had to and then the other two ran off so i let them be but and that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, I'm, I'll get this episode uploaded for sure. Um, episode 5 I might do. I don't know yet. It depends on how bored I get sitting at home sick. So we'll see about that. But episode 5 should be out within the next couple of days. Maybe a half a week because I am going to be pretty busy this weekend. Um, we got marching band and the football game and everything, so we'll see what happens. I'll get it out as soon as I can, though. Um, but thanks for watching, um, and stay tuned for episode 5.